Hello everyone, welcome to RDS Aurora. This is our agenda. We'll have an introduction on Aurora, then different Aurora endpoints, how VPCs can be used to launch Aurora cluster, what is a master user, then we'll see a very small demo, not an exhaustive one. Aurora is an RDBMS provided by AWS itself. It is MySQL and PostgreSQL compatible RDBMS engine. This means that if existing applications are using either MySQL or PostgreSQL, then those applications can be migrated to Aurora without a single line of code change in the programs. Being RDS, it is a fully managed service. Existing codes, applications, etc. do not need any change for movement from MySQL and PostgreSQL to Aurora, as I said earlier. But only if the applications are written to use either MySQL or PostgreSQL. While creating an Aurora instance, a DB cluster has to be created which contains a primary instance and one or more replica instances. A maximum of 15 replicas can be created in Aurora. This is a region with multiple AZs in it. A cluster contains single master or primary instance and multiple replicas. Each of them will have their own storage. Data in all of them are exactly the same. This is called a cluster volume. Cluster volume is actually a virtual database storage which spans multiple AZs, each having a copy of same data. Reads and writes happen at primary instance, but the replica instances can be used for read workloads, kind of similar to RDS read replicas. Endpoints in Aurora is different than what we have seen in our previous de demonstrations. Aurora provides multiple endpoints. First, we have cluster endpoint, something like this. This is our cluster with multiple database instances, one being the primary and others are replicas of the primary. Cluster endpoint will always point towards the primary. If this primary is down, then RDS would select a new primary, then this endpoint would point to this new primary. Then we have reader endpoint, which looks like this. Notice the arrow highlighted, which is actually read only. This endpoint would point to all the replicas. This endpoint supports load balancing option to connect to all the replicas. That means all your connections from applications will be load balanced across all the available replicas to distribute traffic so that a single replica is not overloaded with read workloads. Finally, you have instance endpoint that points to individual DB instances in the cluster. This is how instance endpoint looks like. This might be the first instance and pointing to the primary of a master. Then we have another instance endpoint, which might be pointing to another DB instance in the cluster. VPC for Aurora is exactly same as that of other RDS instances. We need at least two AZs. Each AZ should have one subnet at the least. Aurora DB clusters have to be launched in RDS subnet groups, similar to an RDS instance. In our demonstration, we created a subnet group first, then we launched our RDSDB instances in that subnet. This is our region and two AZs. Each AZ has a subnet. A subnet group can be created using these two subnets as they are in two different AZs. Then Aurora cl cluster can be launched in the subnet group. In our demo, we can use the subnet group which we created earlier. Master user is similar to the admin user which we created in our RDS demo. Master user is the user which is created while creating the database cluster. And master user is granted a lot of privileges by default. It can create, alter, delete tables, it can insert and update data, it can create references, referential integrities, it can create triggers, etc. Let's see a very small demo now. We'll create an Aurora DB instance and specify all the details. We'll note the endpoint. We'll create only one Aurora replica. I'll also show you how to create cross-region replica. I'll not create one though. It is exactly similar as you did earlier. Click on instances and then click on launch DB instance. And here you can select Amazon Aurora. These are the feature highlights by AWS. It gives up to five times the throughput of MySQL and three times the throughput of PostgreSQL. It supports 64 terabyte. In case of RDS, we can support only 16 terabyte. Six-way replication across three AZs, up to 15 read replicas are possible with sub 10 millisecond replication lag. 
automatic monitoring and failover in less than 30 seconds. Then we can select the database engine, either MySQL 5.6 compatible, MySQL 5.7 or PostgreSQL compatible. I'll select MySQL 5.6. Aurora also provides a free tier usage. Click on next and then specify the instance details. It is similar to what we have seen. We have to provide the instance class. Let's say t2.small, multi-easy deployment, whether they want to en enable a multi-easy deployment or not. There are two options. One is create replica in a different zone and then no. I'll select no. DB instance identifier similar to RDS. Master username would be admin and I'll give it a password. Click on next. Then we have configuration of advanced settings, which are nothing but VPC, subnet groups, etc. We'll select our VPC. Subnet group is AWS Foundation Subnet GRP. Or they want to make it pub publicly accessible. We don't want to because all our subnets are private subnets. Easy preference, I'll give US East 1A. If, if you want, you can give no preference. We want to create a VPC security group or choose an existing security group. I'll choose an existing one, which is our DBSG. I'll remove the default one. And then database options will be a DB cluster identifier. You have to give a database name. This database should be created while creating the Aurora DB instance. I'm keeping the default database port. If you want to enable encryption or not, I'll disable it. If you enable, either you can use the default CMK provided by RDS or we can use our own CMK which you created in our KMS session. Failover, you can mention different priorities. By default, it would be no preference. You want to create automated backups. Minimum is one day and maximum is 35 days. I do not want to enable enhanced monitoring and I'll not enable auto minor version upgrade because this is just demo. I'll delete this cluster once this de demo is done and I'll not select any maintenance window as well. Click on launch DB instance. So the DB instance is being created. This will be an Aurora DB instance. Select instances. This is the cluster which we have just created. All information are exactly similar. We have CloudWatch here and endpoints are not available yet. I have not created any read replicas as of now. Once this cluster is launched and active, then I'll change it to multi-AZ. Then we'll see the read replicas and its corresponding endpoints. Here's the ARN of the cluster. This is the cluster ID which we provided and the cluster role is reader as of now. Automated backups are enabled and the retention period is one day. There's no snapshots, I have not tagged it, no logs yet, no replication. It will take some time for the cluster to be created. The Aurora cluster has been created and, in, and is available now. This is the cluster endpoint of Aurora cluster. We can use it the same way like we did in case of MySQL RDSDB instance. This Aurora DB instance does not have any replicas. Let me go ahead and create a replica now. Click on the instance and then instance actions. Click on create Aurora replica. Everything would be the same except for the DB instance identifier where I'm mentioning a different name than the main instance. There's priority logic. I'm not giving it any preference. If I give triad zero and if you have multiple re read replicas or multiple Aurora replicas, this instance would be selected primary first. It is in creating state. It will take some time for this Aurora replica to be up and running. Aurora replica has been created. Click on this one, scroll down, and this is the replica endpoint. If you go at the bottom, it will tell you that in this cluster, how many Aurora DB instances are there. Currently you have two. One is Aurora cluster and then Aurora replica one. For the first one, the role is writer and the second one, the role is reader. It will also show you what is the replica lag. Currently it's 12.436 milliseconds only. If you launch multiple replicas, all those replicas would be behind this endpoint only. And if you send connection to this endpoint, the load would be distributed across all the Aurora replicas which have been created. Let's say a little bit more about pricing. We have already discussed this in our RDS part 2. There are different dimensions in pricing. There's storage, there's backup, there's DB instance. In DB instance, you have pay-as-you-go model and price varies from one instance class to another. 
This table shows you the difference of pricing between various database engines. And the pricing is for db.r3.xlarge, all for multi AZ deployment, and for the region North Virginia or US East 1. For Amazon Aurora, this is the pricing. The instance class is priced at $0.58 per hour. Storage cost is 10 cents per GB per month. IO cost is 20 cents per 1 million requests. There's no IOPS here. Storage is internal to Amazon Aurora. MySQL, the instance class db.r3.xlarge is priced at $0.480. Storage cost is $0.23 per GB per month. And the IO cost is 20 cents per IOPS per month. Instance class for MariaDB is priced at $0.95 per hour. Storage cost is same for all the database engines. So is the IO cost. Oracle is $1.957 per hour. And PostgreSQL is $1 per hour for db.r3.xlarge instance class. We have already seen reserved DB instances. We can use those to reduce the per hour cost. If you need more details, you can visit this page. That's all about RDS and Aurora. Thanks for watching.